بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما grade seven we are in module eleven sampling and statistics today we have lesson four compare two populations compare two populations in this lesson we want to learn how to make comparative inferences about two populations based on the data from random samples. The first idea, ship of data distribution. Listen, please. Shape of data distributions. Teaching notes. Data collected from a sample can be organized and displayed in a graph such as a box plot or a dot plot. The shape of a graph is often referred to as its distribution which shows the arrangement of data values. Select the buttons to see an example of asymmetric box plot and dot plot. Credit. Symmetric distributions, symmetric distributions. In symmetric distributions, the shape of the graph to the left of the center in the same as the shape of the graph to the right of the center. See, please. As you see here, we have box plot. Here in the middle, we have the center. This side of the box and this side, as you see, will be congruent. And the whisker here equal the whisker here. So the right side congruent with the left side. So the name here will be what? Will be symmetric. Symmetric distributions. Symmetric distributions. And in the dot plot the same idea. We have here the center. And as you see here the right side equal the left side. So means we have symmetric distributions, symmetric distributions. The opposite idea, asymmetric distributions, listen please. Shape of data distributions. Teaching notes. Select the buttons to see an example of an asymmetric box plot and dot plot. Credit. Asymmetric distributions, in asymmetric distributions, the shape of the graph on one side of the center is very different from the other side. The data may contain one or more outliers. See, please, in this dot plot, as you see here, we have here the center, the median, here the first quarter, here the third quarter, but the distance here greater than the distance here. So, not congruent. And we have here the whisker, different than the, the whisker here. So the right side greater than the left side. So in asymmetric box plots, the length of the boxes and whiskers vary. So recall that a shorter length indicates the data are clustered together, while a longer length indicates the data are more spread out. And the same idea in the box plot. And the same idea in the dot plot, as you see here. Here we have the center, here we have the right side, here we have the left side. This is asymmetric because the left side different than the, uh, the right side, as you see. So in asymmetric dot plots, the frequencies of the data values on either side of the center vary. Listen please here. Teaching notes. Move through the slides to learn what measures of center and variation to use for distributions. In the distribution shown, 
the mean is less than the median because the mean is affected by the five data values of zero. Because of this, the median is the most appropriate measure of center for asymmetric data. For symmetric data, you can use the mean or the median. So when, when you have symmetric data, when you have symmetric data, the best measure, mean uh, or median. When you have symmetric data, the best measure, mean or median. As you see here, the mean, and as you see here, the median. And here, the mean less than the median. So the median here is the best, the best measure. See here, please. As you see here, we have symmetric. So best measure of center and durability. Here we have a three kind. We can choose here either because here we have mean and median or IQR, interquartile, inter quartile quartiles or the mean absolute deviation. So no one here is suitable to this case. So we write here either. And here, in this case, best measure of center and variability here will be median and interquartile range. Median and interquartile range. The second idea, compare two populations. Listen, please. Compare two populations. Teaching notes. A double box plot consists of two box plots graphed on the same number line. A double dot plot consists of two dot plots that are constructed so that the values on each number line align. You can draw inferences about two populations represented by a double box plot or a double dot plot by comparing their centers and variabilities. As you see here, we have two samples. This is the first one, the second one, or the top and the below. This is as a box plot and this is as a dot plot. Listen here, we have here the dot double box plot and double dot plot. So both data sets are symmetric. As you see here, this is the top and this is the bottom. Here, here symmetric, here asymmetric. So use the mean or median as a measure of center and the corresponding measure of variation, mean absolute deviation or interquartile range. Here neither data set is symmetric. As you see here, not symmetric. So use the median as a measure of center and the corresponding measure of variation, the interquartile range. Only one data set is symmetric. As you see here, just one symmetric. So use the median as a measure of center and the corresponding measure of variation, the interquartile range. So when you have not symmetric or one symmetric or one sample symmetric, we can use the median and the interquartile range the median and the interquartile range. Listen here, we have double box plots here. As you see here, symmetric, but here not symmetric. So what is the interquartile range of the box plot, of the top box plot? As you remember, the interquartile range, the difference between Q3 and Q1 means 40 minus 30. 40 
minus 30 will be 10. What is the interquartile range of the bottom box plot? 20 minus 10 will be 10. How do the data in the populations vary around the median? So, because the interquartiles are the same, as you see here 10 and here 10, 40 minus 30, 10 and here 10, will be interquartile range will be the same, means the data are clustered. Similarly, around each median, although the medians are different. And here, in this example, what is the median of the top box plot? As you see here, the median 35, and the median here will be 15. So we have different medians here. How do the centers compare? The median of the top box plot is more than twice. Here 35, here 15. So this is more than twice of this median. The median of the bottom box plot. For example, compared to populations, the double dot plot shows the heights in inches for the girls and boys in a means math class. Here we have the girls, here we have the boys. This is the distribution for the girls and the distribution for the boys. Use the measures of center and variability of the sample to make an inference about the height of students in I means grade at school. So the first step, compare the measures of center and variability. We have here for girls and here for boys, and here we have the data. So the data for both graphs are symmetric. As you see here, the right side equal the left side, so this is symmetric. And as you see here, the right side equal the left side, so this is symmetric. So you can use either, either the mean and the mean absolute deviation. So when you have symmetric, use the mean and the mean absolute deviation. Or you can use the median and the interquartile range. For this example, the mean and mean absolute deviation, MAD means mean absolute deviation, are used. Find the mean, as you remember, the mean will be the sum of the data divided by the amount of numbers. So here we have uh, 63 one times, here we have uh, 64 uh, two times, 65 two times, 66 three times, etc. And here the same idea. So find the mean for the girls, find the sum divided by the number will be 62, and for the boys will be 66. As you see here, the mean height for boys is 66 inches for the boys. Then find mean absolute deviation for the girls and mean absolute deviation for the boys. As you remember, the mean absolute deviation means the distance between the mean and each and each value here. And for example, uh, uh, the mean of the boys will be 66. Now 66 minus 63 will be 3. So right here 3. 66 minus 64 will be 2. And here we have two dots, means you can write 2 times 2. And 66 minus 65 will be 1. And we have two dots here. You can write 2 times 1, etc. Divide by the number. So, will be 1.38 for the boys and 0 0.83 for the girls. So, the mean is 62 inches. Find each distance from the mean. Simplify. So, the mean absolute deviation for girls about 0 0.83. And for the boys will be 1.38. So 
So as you see here, for the boys greater than for the girls. So the mean height for boys is greater than the mean height for girls. There is a greater, greater variation around the mean height for boys than the girls. Because 1.38 greater than 0.83, so the girls' height are more closely, more closely clustered together than the boys' height. Because boys have greater variation, then means the girls will be more closely clustered. The second step, make an inference about the heights of students in high men's grade at school. Because on these symbols, you can infer that the boys in high men's grade are generally together than the girls. The inference is passed on these symbols uh, alone different. Symbols may lead to different inferences about the interpopulation. The second example here. Compare two populations, the double box plot shows the number of daily participants for two adventure companies. As you see here, this is the first sample, the second sample. Here, white water tours and here, uh, rabbit adventures. Use the measures of center and probability of the sample to make the inference about the daily participants of each adventure company. So what I do, the first step, compare the measures of the center of variability. Listen here. As you see here, the median, the median number of daily participants is greater, greater for rabbit. Because here the median 50 and the median here 70, 70 greater than 50. Adv uh, adventures, 70 then white water tools. So the median here in the top, greater than the median here in the bottom. Then, as you see here, the third quarter, the interquartal range for Rabbit Adventures is here will be 80 minus 50 will be 30 and here will be 60 minus 40 will be 20. So 80 minus 50 or 30 daily participants the interquarter range for white water tools is 60 minus 40 will be 20 daily participants. There is a greater variability in the data for Rabbit Adventures. So the data are more closely clustered around the center of white water tools. The second step, make an inference about the population of daily participants for the adventures. Companies pass it on the samples. You can infer that when any randomly selected day, it is likely that rabbit adventures will have a greater number of daily participants. However, the number of daily participants of white water tours is more likely to be constant. The last idea in this lesson Compare means of two populations. How can you determine if two samples are drawn 
for populations with similar similar means. Suppose you want to find out if high school students visit the library more during the school year than middle school students. You, uh, you survey samples from each population and calculate the mean number of visits from each sample. To view results from the samples, as you see here, we have two experiments here. Listen, please. In the first experiment here, the mean will be about 63.60, and the mean absolute deviation will be 29.28. And listen here. The mean here will be 94.60, and the mean absolute deviation will be 16.48. So the mean here is greater than the mean here, and the mean absolute deviation less than the mean absolute deviation here. The second sample here, listen here please, and listen here. The mean here will be 56, and the mean here will be 82. So here greater than the first mean. And the mean absolute deviation here 27.20, and the mean absolute deviation here will be 14.56. So the mean, mean absolute deviation here less than the mean absolute deviation here. So make a reduction for the means of each population using sample one and two. So answers while vary. The reduction should be passed upon the values that were generated in the students' samples. In the third sample, in the third sample here, as you see here, the mean. 47.20, the mean here 84.70, the mean absolute deviation here 25.44, and the mean absolute deviation here will be 16.76. So the mean here greater than the mean here, and the mean absolute deviation here less than the mean absolute deviation here. So after observing the sample size, often have your reductions for the mean of each population, change it, explain. The answer, some students will get a significantly different mean from sample size 10 when compared to sample size 5. They should take this into account when making a reduction. The four symbols here, the mean, as you see, As you see here, 50, uh, 57.90 and here 82.95. Here greater than here. And the mean absolute deviation here 23.56 and here 25.50. So here the mean absolute deviation also greater than here. So after observing a sample size of 40, write a final production for the mean of each population. So some students will get 
uh, significantly different mean from sample size 40 when compared to sample size 10 or 5. They should take this into account when making a reduction. Did the increase in sample size change low confident you were in your reduction justify your reasoning? So yes, as the sample size increases, the mean of the sample becomes closer to the mean of the population. How can you determine if two samples are drawn from populations with the similar means? If the means of the samples are similar, it is likely that the means of the populations will be similar. The lesser the difference between the two means in the samples, the greater the likelihood that the means in the population are similar. This is our lesson today. Thank you for your listening. Have a nice day. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.